Hello, and welcome to episode number 104 of the LSR Podcast. My name is Matt Brown, joined each and every week by the brightest minds in all of the gaming industry. With me this week, Dustin Galker, Adam Candy. You can follow them on the Twitter machine, and you should. It is absolutely free, at Dustin Galker, at Adam Candy, two E's, no Y. And if you hate yourself, you can follow me, at Matt Brown, M2. We will talk about an odds deal that may help us out a little bit, at least from our sanity perspective. We'll talk about that. Connecticut, we'll talk about. There is a launch of a company that we have talked about several times on this podcast, but they are officially live. We will talk about that as well. We'll get the state updates, but let's kick things off here, guys, with a story of an offshore. Uh, One of the ones perhaps people know by another name. Maybe you remember back in the day, Bodog, there were commercials, there were promos. They were spending money like nobody's business, rebranded to Bovada. And Dustin, um, still serving the United States, but they are making a decision to not serve some of the people in the United States. Yeah, they just sent an email to customers saying they will no longer be taking betters from New York anymore. Now, you you may ask why what has changed. Obviously, we know that New York has has legalized uh, sports betting uh, and working toward a launch sometime either, you know, probably early next year. So that is what has changed. What has not really changed though, and this is the curious part is, is really it's legal status uh, that, you know, the, the fact that there is a legal market now doesn't really change that it wasn't legal for operators to serve, serve New York in the first place. So it's a curious decision. It's also, uh, you know, from the backstory of this, they were out of New York. They came back in, in 2018. Don't know what happened in 2018, but they've been, you know, in theory, for the last several years, been still serving New York for not just sports betting, but for casino and poker as mm-hmm. well. So, we have, yeah, this is. Uh, I mean, it's. I guess it's. I mean, it's sort of good news that you know that operators are are taking taking the temperature and saying, okay, some they've legalized here. Uh, we're we're a little worried about this. You know, we have even a some some background here that somebody familiar with the decision seems to think that this is because they're, f- they're fearful of of prosecutors in New York. Uh, you know, the, the the Fed federal prosecutors famously were behind uh, the online poker crackdown back in 2011. So interesting development. Not sure if I mean, uh, not sure everybody's going to be doing this, but there are you know there are a lot of mm-hmm. eyes on New York as it opens up for online sports betting. We'll see if uh, you know Bavada's uh, or any other bookmakers get a little little bit cold feet as uh, regulated gambling rolls out across the U.S. Dustin, you and I are, are kind of old school in all of this. And, you know, to Bodog's credit, they did at least give uh, some people some ideas as far as the cross-sell thing because they were really the first company that was using poker to drive people to sports and using sports to drive people to poker. And, you know, during the poker boom, yeah, there was poker stars and party poker and and there was full tilt and all that, but none of those had another entity, right? Like they were all just, they were just all what they were. Whereas Bodog had the sports book. It also had the poker room and a little bit of an online casino, not much of one, but a little bit of an online casino as well. And so, they actually encompassed the whole cross sell thing really, really well. I mean, I, I back in the day, I know tons of people who either got exposed to sports betting or exposed to poker or whatever it might have been through that whole cross sell thing that they had going on. Yeah, you, you did have the blackjack button though, right on the on yeah. the poker on the poker rooms uh, that, yeah. we, that we that we were playing on. But they, yeah, <laughs> they 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 were they were a, a forerunner of that. Uh, you know, this is this is where it is headed everywhere in the U.S. now. You know, Michigan. Uh, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, all, you know, this is all baked together. You, you get it all in one spot and yeah, that's, that's something that's happening. And is they, they were well ahead of the curve there, but yeah, I don't, uh, you know, this is, this is, a, this is a strange one from a legal perspective. It, do, it does make you wonder if there's anything else in the background that maybe that, you know, that, that people are right. looking around, right. That, that, that you know, it's it, it, just the legalization. I mean, it's just now, I mean, this, this passed a while ago now, like we're saying, we're saying now, stopping june 21st it's it's all a little bit of weird timing to me but adam um you did not come from a poker background but how how big was the the bodog brand to even like somebody like you who was you were into sports you were not necessarily into poker you weren't necessarily into sports betting way way back in the day but uh how 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 out in front was it It, are are dustin and i just in the bubble or was it as as popular or or at least as recognizable as we think yeah i think the brand recognition is really what we're talking about here right like bodog was something i was very familiar with uh back in the day and so you know now we talk about bovada and what's going on here with uh, the new iteration of it and 
to take Dustin's point and go one step farther, if you were to say, okay, was there some threat of prosecution now? Did you look at the law passed in New York and say, we don't want anything to do with this? That's all well and good, unless you also use the 2018 example and say, if you were an offshore and sports betting became legal at the federal level in, or at least uh, states became able to legalize it from the federal level in 2018, then you probably would have said, well, do we fear federal prosecution, right, for, uh, at that time? Mm -hmm. Not necessarily now. And, you know, we do also have, I don't know if it's a cautionary tale, but the parallel of five dimes. And five dimes, you know, saying essentially we're going to stop serving the market and then being tied to a $46 million settlement over charges of wire fraud and money laundering. So we might potentially be at step one, or this just could be Bovada answering some behind the scenes messaging that maybe mm -hmm. it would be a good time to quiet down. Yeah, it does make you wonder just a little bit as to what this means for some of these other books out there and stuff, because I mean, we're, we're still in the grand scheme of things, we're still in the, the infancy of, of legalized sports betting in the United States. And a lot of these states, as we've talked about on this podcast ad nauseum, is uh, didn't really, you know, know much about all this before we got going here. And now that as this continues to mature, as this continues to become bigger within the states, um, curious as to what you guys think as to could we see other states who go, well, you know what, if we're going to go ahead and if we've already taken the leap here, we've already legalized sports betting. We're trying to make revenue off of this thing that we have, you know, passed and that we have going here because we tell people we're going to be able to make tax dollars off of it, create jobs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Do we think that there's a chance that any of these other states start going, you know what? Let, let's let's take a look at these offshore books. Let's get let's get rid of these guys. I mean, I, I, I know that I'm, I'm totally asking you guys to speculate here, but I mean, I don't think it's a an incredible leap. Right. Because we, we will at some point they'll they'll feel pretty comfortable where they sit in the market. They there won't be too many more things to tweak and regulate. And when you start to talk about optimizing and or growing your market, I mean, one of the ways would be shutting shutting them down. Right. I mean, I think the problem is that states don't have the resources to do this. That's yeah. the problem. The, the will has to come from the feds, really. Like a state prosecutor can't like opening up a giant, you know, international case to to stop them. Uh, I mean, I guess you could band together with a lot of others, and maybe there's something. But you, this has to come from the DOJ. This is a you know inter international interstate thing uh, that that where they're doing this. They're, I mean, yes, they are operating illegally in X state. But yeah, the, to bring the bare resources that are needed to stop any of them to do this, other than yeah, have threats via you know prosecutors behind the scenes or whatever, mm -hmm. it, it seems like it's a, a hard lift for that. It's, I think the will has to come from the feds. I guess we'll, I, I guess we will sit and wait around for that day to come if it does ever in fact come. Um, again, we we breathe, we live and breathe this every single day. Where it is on the pecking order in the grand scheme of things, probably a little bit further down the line. Um, Adam, we've talked a lot on this podcast about, you know, one of the things that uh, the offshores do extremely well. And it, look, we're not going to, while we're advocates for legalized sports betting, we're not going to sit here and try to say that these guys that have these, you know, decades head stars, 20 years head stars, don't do things well and don't understand how to acquire customers and stuff like that. And one of the things they do extremely well is market themselves and what they have done uh, is figured out how to tap into these local markets send out localized content and get credited for it. It's free advertising. It's free. Um, it's free marketing for them. And they do it really, really well. Uh, maybe something that happened here over the last couple of days might actually eat into that a little bit. So the deal and the news peg to this is that FanDuel and the Associated Press now have an agreement for the Associated Press, which is the largest distributor of content for all forms of uh, journalists in the country, whether we're talking about newspapers, radio, television, Associated Press copy is ubiquitous throughout the, co the country, and so uh, internationally as well. But specific to this deal, FanDuel will now be the legal odds provider that the Associated Press uses. So why is that so important right now? Local news is shrinking everywhere. Content production at the local level is shrinking everywhere. The reliance upon AP content is only growing in the United States. And so the reach of this deal has the potential to be huge. Why are we talking about it? I'm going to put the usual caveats at the beginning of this. 
for those out there in sports betting Twitter world. They will ignore it. They will roll past it. They'll pretend I never said any of this. Uh, we are not saying that the offshore market should be shut down. We believe that there right. is a place in the world for the offshore market. Specific to this sort of discussion, though, there is massive confusion among most journalists about what is a legal sports book and what is an offshore illegally operating sports book. They can't tell the difference. When an offshore has .lv at the end of their website, the average person thinks, well, .lv, they're based out of Vegas. Obviously, <laughs> those of us inside the bubble know that is not the case. And beyond that, regulators in Nevada and elsewhere Go to pains to make sure they are only offering markets on verifiable outcomes, right? They try to keep it to things that are very black and white, things where inside information can really not swing the outcome to the point where someone can manipulate the market in any significant way. Well, look at what a lot of these press releases that go out are about. It's about who will be the next host of Jeopardy? Who will be so-and-so's next boyfriend? These are things that would never appear in the regulated market, but yet they get huge headlines among media. Yeah, I mean, we're we're sitting here trying to, you know, there are little things that can be done. Where, like you said, we're not trying to get things shut down. We're not trying to. However, you know, free advertising, eh, you know, these these the the DraftKings, the FanDuel's, the points bets, the BetMGM's, and stuff of the world. They're paying massive licensing fees to be able to operate within these states. They are paying a ton of money to try to acquire customers and all of that. And so. You know, when these sites, I mean, there are a couple of them who are really, really good at it, who will cater content down to a city and send it to all of that city's beat writers. And Dustin, within minutes, we see it popping up all over our Twitter feeds and stuff like that. They make it very easy. They make it very simple for, for these guys to basically just go in and, and use that stuff. And so there's at least a sliver of hope here that maybe some of that marketing, some of that, the, the low-hanging fruit for these guys will at least be taken care of by this deal with the AP. Yeah, I mean, that's the hope. Um, wh where I always start with this, and I, I think Adam can attest to it too, is th there's no comp for using offshore sports books in, the tradi in traditional print me uh, online media. Like th these, again, these are companies, you know, like, whatever we can quibble over, like pe we'll, get, we'll get arguments that they're actually operating legally. That's not true. Yeah. I, obviously the New York story we just talked about, but there's no comp for journalists citing something that is operating legally for as, as a source for something going on, especially next to legal and regulated sports books that are uh, operating uh, increasingly across the country. And, you know, they're not, you know, they're not really interested in the content for like what you can bet. They're just they're, like the, they're interested in the odds as content, right? That is, mm -hmm. co that is content that people want to consume. That is interesting. That is why the offshores do it. That's why, you know, that's why people write about it because it's interesting content. And so for me, it's like we, it starts normalizing, right? You start seeing FanDuel odds, you know, and you can quibble again right. with whether they should have exclusive odds or they should just be going, they should have a deal, whatever. It's uh, I think exactly that's. that's, that's that's a, that's a tangent. That's tangent to Who what cares? the main point is. Who yeah. cares? It, what the, yeah. the, the point is, this starts normalizing regulated sports betting in the United States. You start seeing FanDuel as a as the as the the source for AP content. Other people start doing this, and I hope. I mean, I, I bang this drum. I see it, and I, I sometimes I call it out, or I I suggest, hey, you're you're in a state where it has the legal odds. He, I know somebody sent you this to you, but here is mm. here are the sports books in your state that are offering these odds and you can, you could, you could find this information yourself whenever you want right. to. And, and also then, you know, point people to something that is legally operating in your jurisdiction. So this, this, this is a, this has been a really frustrating thing for me. And it's, it is like Adam said, totally about, it's about education. It's about, you know, again, we, I, I don't still don't know what the percentage of people who just think, you know, Supreme court ruling sports betting is legal everywhere. Uh, you don't care what operator it is. You see sports betting that's legal now. That's what, that's what a lot of people still think. And yeah. this this starts us down the path. I I'm, I'm I applaud this deal from that perspective that we're we're starting to get to a point where this is not normalized in media, just citing you know sports books that are not operating legally in the United and, States. And Adam, I don't also don't want to um, I also don't want people to take the the wrong thing away from this either we're not calling these journalists lazy i don't know if a lot of these guys know any better you know what i'm saying and so like it, it, the the educational process here like at like uh dustin saying kind of like the normalization of it being one of the books that is legal and regulated within the various states and stuff i mean i saw just a couple of days ago right literally two days ago per 
I forget which 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 book it was, you know, whatever. It, it, but it was it was one of the offshores. Uh, the Broncos season win total is yada yada yada, and it was a guy who is a who's a writer for one of the one of the newspapers in Denver, right? And so I'm like, you have a jillion legal sports books at your at your disposal, literally, like, you've got like thirty different books that you could like pick from, and you're like you're you're using this. And again, I, I don't hold him, you know, responsible for that, and I don't think he's lazy or anything. I just don't know if a lot of these guys really and truly kind of understand and realize you know what's what's going on with all that so if, if at least there is some normalization for them to to look to what is available within their states i think it's at least a step in the right direction right this way matt if you are a newspaper journalist who's been writing about a team for 20 years and hey if you've managed to keep a journalism job for 20 years good for you because that's not an easy thing to do today <laughs> uh but if you've been getting releases from these companies over the last decade over the last two decades if they've been sending you content mm -hmm. forever why would you think it's any different pre-2018 and post-2018 it's the same sports book mm -hmm. that's been sending you something forever right it could be the same name real or imagined on that on that release that's coming in and you know know the difference of course you would never blame anybody for that you would never say mm. oh why aren't you doing your research no uh, the confusion was created a long time ago it wasn't intended to be confusion with the legal market until more recently right i mean there was no confusion with the legal market for a long time unless you're trying to confuse things with with right. las vegas and so no uh, there's no blame being cast here just hopefully the education process does continue and you know we'll, we'll beat the drum we'll do the best we can and uh hopefully this deal helps out a little bit before we move on we really have to yeah. thank adam for working sports betting twitter into just a, a complete lather over this topic too that was that was great to see oh no but I, I i would never no i i would never <laughs> nope I'm above, above guys as always uh you know go in subscribe rate and review for the podcast as well we're on apple spotify stitcher google all the places you find podcasts so we do appreciate that if you can help us climb up the uh the charts there and let people know that we're putting out content that you that you like and trust um Adam, I mean, uh, Dustin, so Connecticut is some good, some bad here, depending on, you know, what 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 type of gambling you like to do. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'd say overwhelmingly pretty good news in Connecticut. Basically, legislative approval for sports betting and online casino in the state via the tribes and the lottery uh, waiting. For, we just need the, the signature of the governor, which I don't think has happened yet. Adam, no, not quite yet. If I'm wrong. And we're and we're and we need just and like because it involves tribal compacts, we need the federal approval from the Department of Interior, who oversees all the compacts. So uh, no reason to think that's not going to be given either. So we're basically done in Connecticut. Not official ish, I think, is the term we've uh, we've given it in Connecticut. That this is official ish. Official -ish Oh man, official ishy done. <laughs> uh, uh, but we, you're going to have sports betting. You're going to have online casino. Maybe poker. Poker is included up along online casino. Um, maybe the bad part here is uh, there's limited operators. You're basically getting the two tribes get to offer sports betting. There will be another skin that offered via the state lottery. So you're really you're only going to get three sports books. It looks like DraftKings likely one of those because of its it has a deal with with one of the two tribes in the state and only two online casinos. Lottery gets online lottery. On on top of uh, of that with the, instead of getting its own online casino so limited number of of options uh, for that there's also this problem with fantasy sports that uh, basically uh, the the agreement puts fantasy paid entry fantasy sports kind of on ice as part of all this not great for DraftKings FanDuel anybody taking paid entry even uh, you know even season long I think fantasy where you're paying entry fees uh, at a site uh, is going to have to to be shut down in Connecticut for a while. So not ideal, not what was intended. I mean, it, we, I think we all remember, we, well, we may all remember, they actually hmm. tried to negotiate this with the tribes a few years ago. They actually, yeah. they, they said, oh, we need to go, this is fine, except we have to negotiate it with the tribes. That never really happened. This is what, this was the outcome. And, and now we're, you know, uh, kind of back to the point where DFS is, is kind of on ice. There's ways forward for it, but like right now, immediate future, it looks like it's going to have to have to stop in, in Connecticut for the, for the short term, which uh, has, has attracted the ire of, of the likes of Matthew Barry and, and some others in the industry who uh, are saying or are upset that, you know, DFS paid entry yeah. fantasy sports are, are shut down here in, uh, in Connecticut. Once all this becomes official. Yeah. It is interesting how one thing can affect another, which can affect another, which can affect another. And we kind of see that how, you know, if you don't have these all encompassing type things and, and, and wrap everything all into one that, 
uh, we can certainly have something like this end up occurring. I imagine they'll find a way to, uh, to get things back rolling there, but as you mentioned, it looks like it'll be shut down at least for a little while. Adam, one of the companies uh, on a spending spree throughout the uh, course of the pandemic, we talked about multiple different acquisitions that were made. We talk about uh, multiple different deals that were made with them, uh, most notably the regional sports networks that Sinclair took over from the Fox Sports, uh, Fox Sports regionals uh, that Sinclair now has rebranded full on to Bally Sports at this point. But the one thing that was missing was uh was actually Bally Sports, and uh, but finally we do have a, a look at what's uh, what's going to be under the hood. I'm there. Starting to think this was like Vandalay Import Export, like there wasn't really going to be anything <laughs> behind it in the end. Now, uh, if you've watched a Major League Baseball game, an NBA game, an NHL game over the last couple of months on a regional sports network, you have seen Bally advertise because they took over all of those and rebranded them. And I would say the best thing we can say about awareness is that our writer. Uh, Pat Evans at Legal Sports Report was texting with a friend of his in Michigan, and the friend asked him, quote, what is a bally? And I think that's really where we're at right now is that finally we have this product in beta launch in Colorado where the Bally Bet platform, uh, backed by Betworks, uh, they're the ones who developed it for them, is finally available. Uh, it is not in what would be called an official launch at this point. They're still sort of in a testing phase where you can download it, you can play with it, and they're kind of looking for you to tell them, are there anything, uh, are there any errors, are there any glitches that they need to fix before they really push hard on this thing? Not at all surprised that it's Colorado, one of the lowest barrier to entry states uh, that there is in the country. And so they get the first look at this Bally product. You can assume that, you know, you launch it now into a busy-ish time of the sports calendar, but obviously not mm -hmm. the NFL. You try to have the kinks worked out by the time we get to August and we're really doing uh, a big push and we can launch it in some other states. But Matt, I know uh, you had a look at the app and uh, you thought the interface was fairly user-friendly. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and the website as well. I mean, here's, you know, one of the, one of the, I think one of the shortcomings that nearly all of them have outside of DraftKings and FanDuel right now is just the, the websites are not very intuitive. They're, they're really kind of clunky. You have to, you have to really dig deep and search to try to find the bets that you're looking to make and, and all that. I mean, DraftKings and FanDuel have, have done well. They're, it is, it's laid out perfectly on, on their sites, but the other websites out there are, are pretty tough to navigate. Apps are a little bit better. I still think that a lot of the apps are pretty clunky as far as navigation goes and as far as just giving you what you want is as easy as as easy to acquire as you want it. But yeah, I mean, first first go at it. I was very, very impressed with what Bally's running, especially from a website standpoint. The website's super clean, super easy to navigate. You can find what you're looking for without having to dig all over the place. And I think the app as well is uh, is pretty well designed and and certainly so far that I've just messed with it. I haven't been to Colorado to actually bet on it yet yet, but um, I I messed around with it here in, in Vegas and yeah, it's uh, I think it looks looks really good. I think that they took you know look at, it took them a, t a long time to launch from the time that we actually heard about everything getting going here. But Dustin, I don't know if you had a chance to to take a look at it or, or mess around with it or anything yet, but it does look like they took their time took like the good things from DraftKings, the good things from FanDuel, whatever, and it kind of looks like a it kind of looks like a mesh of all of the good things from the other products that were out there. And hey, look, you know, I mean, that's probably the best way to go about it. Like, why, why reinvent the wheel here? Just take what what what's already working for these other companies and and use it for yourself. Yeah, I, I downloaded it, took a look around. Yeah, obviously, I'm not betting on it either, but it, it looks good. It's easy to navigate. That's really what you want. You just don't want to mm -hmm. you don't want to throw your phone against the wall, right? That's the that's my, right. my like I I do want to do that with my with my Oregon lottery <laughs> app here, and and uh, I often want to throw it against the wall. But so yeah, uh, if that, if if not throwing against the wall is your is your your low bar, it's that, and it's you know it looks much better than again not without actually placing bets. It's hard, mm -hmm. but um yeah, you know I know the team over there. This is a company that has leveraged a lot of resources resources to do this uh you know built you know owns yeah. its own tech stack now to do this so you know this is if it wasn't a great it wasn't a great user experience you think you'd be thinking twice but you know it's it's interesting to see this is you know again all this company is all in on all of this stuff and uh, it's it'll be interesting to see what they do as they they roll out in more and more states adam it will be very interesting to see how gambling twitter takes to it because they can't throw the 
they can't throw the euro mo- like, they can't throw euros at you know here because these are these are american dudes we know them like we're, they're they're right down the street from us here so they can't scream ah euros are ruining sports betting you know so it, it'll, it'll be interesting to see the reaction hey, hey, to, to hey, valley if there's one thing that gambling twitter is good at it is being resourceful and finding things to dislike don't you sell them short <laughs> <laughs> very true very true there will, there will be something to hate i am almost positive about it dustin our friends up in uh up in the great white north shout out to julian who's listening uh are about to uh about to get uh looks like look like we're gonna get some sports betting here well i don't know if we can say that but we're we're moving forward yeah. uh we moved uh moved a. Uh, a bill, the bill that's in the, the Canadian Senate right now, moved to another committee. Uh, this was a, a needed step for uh, along the, the path. Um, there is the the worry here, though, is there's short time. Like if they, they there's only they have through June here to do this, basically five weeks to get this bill done. It's been moving slowly. Uh, if it doesn't get done in June, you know, we're saying this is not going to happen this year. Bill sponsors throwing some a little bit of water on the uh, cold water on the fact this is this has been a done deal, which it, it's you know kind of it's until this this hold up in the Senate, it's like lots of people were basically saying, oh, this is this feels like a done deal. It's you know it's a uh, everything's going right, and now everything's not going right. So any any kind of speed bumps here along the way, amending the bill, uh, you know, somebody like they just don't move it again out of this committee or you know, get a full vote in the Senate, things like that. There's things that can hold this up. So we're uh, we're not looking at a done deal in Canada. It's, I mean, it's still, I mean, this is certainly the most progress single game sports betting has ever made. Uh, and we, you know, and we know that there are, there are provinces will do this. To be clear, this this just gets rid of, like in the U.S., this would get rid of the ban on single game wagering. They have parlay wagering in Canada. So we'll see what this all means. Um, you know, we have, we, we, we'll be watching the team over there. We'll be watching at LSR. We'll be watching this over the next several weeks to see if we get some progress. And if, you know, maybe, Maybe north of the border, you'll have some single game betting uh, in the not too distant future. But we have have some work to do before that is a, a reality. And and Adam, I actually think that this market is, despite the size, which I think people you know think of a whole country, and it's the you know it is population wise the size of California, less than the size of California. But um, you know, I think it's actually going to be a really great market in general. Uh, you know, one, they're not completely unfamiliar, as Dustin mentioned. Parts of Canada have already had at least parlay betting, so it's not a completely new step into what is sports betting and how to do go about all this. And you know, the the gray area market up there has certainly thrived. I know a lot of people that use a lot of the sites that we've we've talked about here on on the the pod a ton of different times and then it's also you know a a big poker hotbed up there as well tons of canadian guys are are super big into poker and and play a ton of poker and all of that and um you know they like american sports super definitely love the nba up there in uh in canada as well so i think that you know once this gets rocking and rolling that these numbers could be uh could be pretty impressive we've uh we've seen a number of different estimates on the total market in canada i would suggest going to legal sports report where we have a couple of studies linked on that but to your point matt i think there's one thing that we need to remind people of and that what's happening in the canadian parliament is essentially the same thing that happened at the supreme court level in the united states we would be repealing the ban nationally it wouldn't Mm -hmm. essentially make sports betting legal throughout canada it would allow provinces to make their own decisions. Now, we know Ontario is interested. We know British Columbia is interested. And of course, those are two of the major population centers with Toronto and Vancouver, who are obviously also, as you mentioned, rabid about their sports teams. And so you see where there is a lot of potential for sports betting in Canada. um, But is it a priority? And that's the real question here, because uh, Kevin Waugh, who is the one who sponsored the bill, says it's basically a 50-50 proposition that this gets through the Senate by the end of June. So, yes, it has potential. Yes, it has a lot of support from places that it didn't have before. But the same question we asked earlier in the podcast, we think these things are important. We think they're top of mind for everyone from inside the bubble. Right. Uh, But there are obviously much larger concerns going on for the country of Canada than do they get to bet on sports. Dustin, we just need to send Julian to go talk to them because who could say no to Julian? I mean, I like yeah, that guy with, with that accent and that face. I mean, like who, who could say no to Julian? No, he, he would get this passed in, in less than 24 hours. So I, I'm positive of it. Um, all right, Adam, let's uh, let's take things home here with some state updates. 
Always state updates to throw out there. Let's go to the great state of Ohio. Uh, if you thought Canada was being slow and deliberate and being <laughs> very Canadian, very polite, like, are you sure you're okay with it? Are you sure? Are you sure? Well, <laughs> Ohio's kind of going the same way. They just had their third hearing on a bill that only dropped a couple of weeks ago, essentially for more testimony. And they are hearing testimony from teams, from leagues, from colleges, from retailers. The Bowling Association has been out there lobbying for their own piece of the pie. Huh? Huh? Bowling alleys and sports betting. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Ohio had another hearing. No action. They really want to get something moved by the end of June as well. So, hey, another similarity with Canada. Uh, Maryland put out sort of its first FAQ and uh, other information for people interested in applying in sports betting. Another state that's trying to get something done uh, by the uh, NFL season because their voters passed it. Last year, their legislature got it done at the very end of the session. Governor Larry Hogan signed it into law, and so you're trying to get that uh, industry up and running as quickly as possible. Speaking of, same situation essentially in Arizona where, yes, we didn't go through voter approval, but we did have uh, the legislature get something done involving tribal gaming. Uh, some rumblings on the ground uh, from sources that we've heard from that the second week of September appears to be the target date. That, of course, dovetails with NFL season, but this is the first time we've heard a hard date uh, thrown out there. So second week of September. But, of course, keep in mind, in Arizona, there's still a lot of work to do because they don't even have a tax rate uh, quite yet. And you can expect there to be some intense lobbying of the Arizona Gaming Department uh, for what ultimately gets set as the tax rate on sports betting in Arizona. In Wyoming, we just had a hearing on rules as we did in South Dakota as well. Those are two places that passed sports betting this year as well. Not expected to be huge markets, uh, but just another state checked off the list of uh, states that might potentially have sports betting. Nothing to update you on from Florida. If you're out there saying what's the latest uh, from the Sunshine State, same place we left it. Uh, the compact, of course, will have to be uh, signed by DeSantis and sent up to the Federal Department of Interior. And then we've already had promises of legal challenges coming down on that one as well. And uh, not to uh, not to be a homer. Do it. Here, Come but, on. Do it. I didn't say Louisiana. Uh, but, but in Louisiana, it does look uh, pretty promising there as well. And then also the... Uh, we were, you know, we were kind of curious as to how the whole mobile aspect was going to play out there. And it looks like that they're actually going to go mobile first because they want to be sure and be up and running by football season. So it's like, hey, mobile first. We can build these sports books later. Yeah, right? And what's been happening in Louisiana since I did not update it uh, was not a slight to you, Matt, uh, was that we obviously had the money bills starting on the House side because in Louisiana, that's where the money bills have to start. The regulated regulation bills starting on the Senate side. Both chambers have passed their bill and sent it across uh, the other direction. So um, what happened with DFS was it basically took two years after voters said yes to get anything going. They're trying to avoid that problem here with sports betting, and it looks like they'll be able to do so successfully. Also, didn't mention you guys might have covered it last week, but uh, start your car engines and drive to Omaha as quickly as possible because Nebraska has approved <laughs> retail only sports betting. Guys, as always, everything that we talk about here on the podcast, you can find the written form over at LegalSportsReport.com. Go in, take in all of the awesome work being done by Adam and his team over there. It is a bunch of phone calls, a bunch of readings of bills. They are doing all the stuff that you don't want to do and bringing you the news that you do want to ingest. So be sure and take that in over at Legal Sports Report. If you want to follow Dustin on Twitter, at Dustin Galker, you want to follow Adam, at Adam Candy, two E's, no Y. For Dustin. For Adam, I'm Matt. Talk to you guys next week. <laughs>